Whoop. Hey, what's up, YouTube? You're watching Ready, Set, Drone, and today I have a brand new set of digital goggles from Emacs. These are the Transporter 2 HD goggles, and these are basically affordable HD Zero goggles that work with the HD Zero transmission system. We're gonna check them out. We're gonna use the Apex, which also has the uh, HD Zero transmission system in it, so that we can fly with an Emacs drone and using the Emacs goggles and see how it goes. So stay tuned. All right, so real quick, if you're new to Ready, Set, Drone, please hit the subscribe button because we do lots of uh, drone videos. It's in the name, right? These are the Transporter 2 HD goggles, brand new from Emacs. Now Emacs, if you're not familiar, they're the company that makes the Tiny Hawk and the Baby Hawk, and they've been around for a while doing FPV quadcopters and mostly analog FPV quadcopters. They have done a couple of digital things, but mostly analog. This is something new for them. It's a digital system called HD Zero. It's uh, sort of a competitor to the DJI digital system. And it's a little bit more interesting because it's sort of a hybrid almost between digital and analog. And that said, you're gonna get a lot better picture, but you'll also get the low latency that you get with an analog system. So a lot of people are excited about this setup. So let's open up the goggles here real quick. I have not opened these. I have used their Transporter 2 goggles before, the, uh, the other version, the analog version, so I'm familiar with those, but I have not seen these HD ones. I think what they were trying to do with these, again, was make a affordable set of goggles that someone just getting into flying FPV could use, but if you wanted to get into flying digital FPV and you didn't want to pay, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars for digital DJI goggles, these are an alternative. Now keep in mind, these don't work with the DJI protocol. These are HD zero, so it's a totally different setup. But uh, there they are. It does have this removable screen that comes off, and this is magnetic, so it pops on there. So you can use it as a screen that you would actually mount. It's got a quarter 20 thread on the bottom, so if you wanted to mount it on a little tripod and fly FPV that way, or pass it to somebody else who wants to be able to watch while you're flying, fly line of sight. Now there is, um, of course, a piece of glass in there, and that's a lens that allows you to get really good focus with your eyes. These need to be stretched out like so. Let's put this on. It has two antenna caps, and it comes with two antennas. And then it does have a built-in battery in the screen, so that screen is going to be something you'll need to charge via USB cable prior to taking off. Now again, Emacs has been working with these lower cost, ready to fly systems for FPV people who might not already have a transmitter or goggles or the quadcopter that has uh, the right transmission system in it. So I'm imagining this is gonna be part of a ready to fly kit that you can get to be able to fly with this quad, these goggles and an ELRS uh, radio. So looking at these, there is a, oh, it's USB-C. Way to go, Emacs. Finally getting away from that old micro USB. So you're gonna plug in right here in the side. This has a built-in battery, so I'm gonna put it on real quick and just see how it looks when I'm wearing it. Okay, the power button is going to be, oh, there's four buttons here on the front. There's the power. Turn it on, see if it's got any juice. Okay, yeah, it's looking for the drone right now. But what I was gonna say is with this particular setup, you can actually power this with a power brick. So if you have a USB power brick and you wanna fly for longer than the battery allows you to fly, I believe you can actually just plug it in and it will run off of that power brick. There's a little red light right there that indicates that it's charging, I believe. If I pull this out, it goes away. Yeah, so this is, if you just wanna charge them, you can use, of course, a power brick or you can use a wall socket or whatever. But then I believe it'll also run with the power brick and it helps if you press the right button. So I'll press the power on and see if it comes on with this power brick attached. Yeah, and it does. And then let's see, we've got the Apex Quad here. Let's go ahead and plug a battery into it. 
This is a bottom mounted battery setup. I think this battery might be too skinny for actually flying, but we're gonna go ahead and just plug it in uh, for a moment. It's a 4S with an XT30 connector. It says it's scanning. Oh, there we go, it found it. Found it automatically. I'm getting a little bit of uh, glitchiness in it. Oh, you know what? It's because I'm too close. It's interesting, when you have it right up next to it, you get some distortion. Let me, let me show this to you. So you see the live view there, and it looks pretty good, right? And then watch when I bring this close. But yeah, it automatically scanned, found the quad, and gave me a signal. First of all, the uh, card that you use in the goggles, in the instructions it actually says it needs to be a 32 gig or less card, but in reality, this seems to work with a 32 or a 64 gig card. Um, I put both of them into the side of the screen here, and then through the menus went to format card. It actually said no card when I first put it in because it probably wasn't formatted correctly or how it wants to be formatted. But regardless, I was able to format both a 32 and a 64 gig card, and I was able to do a test recording with both and both recorded and played back just fine. So that was cool. And another thing we just discovered is that with auto record on, what actually happens is when you turn the quad on and it connects to the receiver, the receiver, uh, being the screen and the DVR, starts recording automatically. And if you have it in manual, you have to push some buttons to make it go. So I'd probably recommend you just put it in auto if you're planning to record your flights. And within the menu of the goggles, you can actually set the recording format to either MOV or TS. I'm not sure what TS is. I've seen, I feel like I've seen that format before. It might be a Windows friendly format, I'm not sure. But I set it to MOV because that seems to be a more standard format. And then I was also gonna mention, I really like this little fan in the front. These things are actually pretty loud when they're on because that fan is running, but I'd prefer it be a little bit loud with the fan running, keeping the screen cool in order to prolong its life and to make sure that everything works properly versus having it overheat. I live in Texas, it gets really hot. If you're gonna fly in the summer, even early in the morning or at night, it gets really hot. And so having that fan in here ensures that these things are gonna be able to stand up to a little bit more heat. Overall, the navigation between the buttons and the screen and the menus on this thing is pretty intuitive. I feel like these are going to be a great entry point for a lot of people who wanted to get into flying HD FPV but don't wanna drop the money for a more expensive pair of goggles. Great place to start. And honestly, these would be great ride-alongs after the fact because you can do it with the goggles or you can just have it here with the screen so someone could be watching. I believe with HD Zero, the receiver is receive only. It doesn't transmit back to the quad or back to the transmitter that's in the quad. And so therefore, I don't think you're gonna have as much of a problem with interference as you do with like DJI digital systems when you have two people close together. I think these are just receive only, so anybody, any number of people could just put it on the channel you're on if they had one of these and watch you fly from your perspective and it wouldn't mess anything up. As far as build quality on this thing goes, it's well made for a cheap pair of goggles. In other words, it feels like, um, you know, it's not gonna just fall apart. It's go going to last. The foam is okay. The strap's actually quite nice. Um, the antennas fit on nicely and they fold over so you can do that, you know, different angles. Um, but, you know, it's also not a high-end, really expensive pair of goggles. So it doesn't feel like one. And the glass in it, or plastic, I suppose, is pretty decent. Um, for my eyes, it's a little blurry, but I think I probably need to wear my glasses uh, with this if I'm gonna try and read menus. Now, just for flying, I can see just fine without glasses, but to read menus and stuff, I would definitely need glasses, or I just need to take this off and hold it a little further away, because when it's that close to my eyes, I can't see as well. So I would be curious if this will work with glasses. Hold on, I'll go grab some. Insert glasses grabbing music there. These are just a pair of readers that I have. And let's see if I turn this on and go ahead and pull this out. Remember to pull it out because it's not gonna look in focus if you have it pushed in still. Pull the strap down and uh, does it work with glasses? Sort of. 
I mean, I can definitely read everything with the glasses on, but they don't exactly fit into the space. I don't know if you can see, kind of do, but I don't know. That, that's not very comfortable that way. So I think what I would probably do in my case is do all of my uh, menu stuff with it like this. And now I can definitely see it there. It just, it's pressing, this thing presses against the glasses and it isn't super comfortable. So I don't think it's glasses friendly unless your glasses are smaller than these. And these aren't super big. So all of that said, this guy wants to find a drone and it can't find it right now because the drone is not on. Let's get these two matched up, let nature take its course and go for a flight. So come on. This little quad is awesome. Yeah, I, you know, I've stayed in this general area and because of that, the interference has been only really bad when I go behind that tree. And then pretty much here, if I go to the, past that walking path is where I start to get a lot of interference. Whoop, I almost hit a tree there. I mean, I feel like I'm flying analog, honestly. Would you say, yeah. Chris? M maybe slightly better than analog, but definitely not anywhere close to DJI Digital. Uh. Okay, we went to the park and it didn't go as planned. First of all, I wanna clarify something that I've learned since then. That's been a few days, actually. It's been probably four or five days since we had that flight at the park. We've flown this multiple times now and we haven't had a lot of great luck, but I think the reason is because I didn't understand something. I thought that HD zero was a digital format. And if it is, it's not a digital format in the way that DJI is a digital format or the avatar from Walksnail is a digital format. It is an analog format with HD image more pixels, right? So instead of the 640 by 480 of standard definition, you're getting more pixels, a bigger view, but you're still gonna get that dropout. And it's really designed for racers. This is designed so that people who are flying nearby, flying through gates and have a clear line of sight to the drone are right there and can see with low latency. That's the whole point of it. So what happened to us, we went out to the field had a very glitchy experience, was having a hard time flying at any distance, but we were at 25 milliwatts, which is the default setting. We bumped that up to 200 milliwatts on race band one, and it still didn't look that great. So we switched to race band three on 200 milliwatts, still didn't look that great. Finally, we switched it to race band seven on 200 milliwatts, and there was a marked improvement. It looked a lot better. You could fly a little further, the glitches were still happening, but they weren't happening as frequently. And they only seem to happen when you go around metal or on the other side of an object like a tree. So with DJI FPV, you go around a tree, you still see pretty well. You don't get any dropouts. With HD zero, when you go around a tree or under a power line or near a metal fence or any of those things, you get a lot more dropouts and you don't have the range that you have with digital. It's still analog. We actually did some comparisons to a analog setup with 100 milliwatts and the HD zero at 200 milliwatts, and they were pretty similar. And in some cases, the analog was actually a little bit better. So all of that said, with my conclusion on this, is if you're buying this setup with these goggles or anything that you're using with HD zero, don't expect it to look like digital FPV because it's not. It is more designed for low latency that analog gives you, and it isn't designed for long distance to fly away. It's not designed to fly through buildings or to fly through spaces where you're gonna be blocked. It's really, if you're flying out in a field and you've got a clear line of sight and you're not going very far, then HD zero can work for you. I hope that makes sense. This little guy, the Apex, it's fun to fly. It reminds me a lot of the Baby Hawk. It's very zippy. Um, it's a good little drone. 
The goggles themselves, they're pretty well made for the price. They're not the greatest, but they're certainly versatile, you know, with the ability to take this, this piece off and to record with the DVR. They've thought of a lot of good things with these. And so I'm hoping the price is competitive for the fact that the image quality is not that great in the goggles, but that's kind of, you're getting what you're paying for, right? You're paying a little bit less, so the quality's not as good. But with the HD Zero, turn it up to 200 milliwatts and then try all the different channels and find the one that works best. And also try to fly this thing away from interference. So Emacs, thank you for making this. Thank you for trying to get more people into flying FPV with these ready to fly kits and making goggles that are more affordable. Just uh, my only thing in this is set the expectation properly with people about HD Zero. It's not a digital format and you're gonna get some glitches as you fly, but it's just part of the thing. And you're gonna get lower latency. So if you're getting into racing and wanna do really quick turns or tricks that you have to react very quickly to, that's a good thing to have that low latency, but you're not gonna get the penetration or the range that you get with digital, or even in some cases, analog. Let me know what you think about Emacs. Let me know what you think about the goggles. Let me know what you think about HD Zero below in the comments. I'd love to read them, I always do. I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time on Ready, Set, Drone.